Hello there, my name is James Rangan. Today we're going to be talking about how to create a Microsoft Edge based kiosk on a Windows 10 machine. So this video is replacing another video that I recorded some time ago which discussed how to set up a Microsoft Edge kiosk in Windows 10. Back when I recorded the last video it was very difficult to get it set up properly. However, since Windows 10 1803 it is much much easier so I thought this is a good time to re-record the video and show you how much easier it is. Now there's two main kind of use cases for using a kiosk mode. The first one is you know something that just has kind of like a, a single display on it so um, a machine that just maybe has a, a, a monitor that shows the same video over and over again you know for a for a kind of a, a reception room setting or something like that or a web page the other one is obviously a public access area where users can come along and use it for kind of internet browsing without having to log in and things like that so internet browsing in a safe environment and we'll show you how to deal with both of those use cases so first of all, the most obvious thing you need is a Windows 10 machine running the 1803 version or higher. This is the 2004 version that we are using here. Completely vanilla build, fully patched as of today, which is the 8th of August, sorry, the 8th of August, the 5th of August, 2020. So if you click on the start menu, simply enough to start and just start typing in ASSIG because we're looking for a thing, a function that was called assigned access originally. And you'll see straight away here, it says set up a kiosk. So click on that. Now you'll get this nice easy screen here that says get started. So simply click on the get started button. And what you need to do here is it will create a local account for you. So just simply type in a name. Now in versions prior to 1803 of Windows 10, you had to create the local account manually before you did this step. However, in the 1803 or higher version, you can simply type in the name of the account you want. I'll just call this one Kiosk and click on Next and it will automatically create the account for you. Now it gives you the option to choose which app you want to use for your kiosk. Obviously we want to use Microsoft Edge because that's what this video is all about. Now you can only use these kind of modern apps that we actually recorded a video yesterday discussing how to remove those modern apps from Windows 10. So obviously you'll want to leave Microsoft Edge behind. It's one of the ones that can't be removed. So if you've done that, I wouldn't worry too much. However, in future, it may be interesting to see if Microsoft allow you to use the new Edge Chromium version, which has come along because that's not a modern app. It's installed in the traditional way. But we'll probably discuss that more in a video a bit later on. So just select Microsoft Edge from the list and click on next and here we will see it'll give you the option to choose between those two use cases i mentioned earlier so you've got the first one as a digital sign or interactive display and the second one as a public browser for this first use case we'll select as a digital sign or interactive display and simply click on next now the next bit that we need to do is find the actual website or url or video link or something like that that you want to put on there the one I'm going to use is this one. So whatever the website URL that you want to put in there is, simply bung it in at this phase. As I said, if you want to do something like play a video over and over, you can put a YouTube link in or something like that. But yeah, just put the list of the website in that you want to appear in full screen there. Click on Next once you've done that, and Windows 10 will simply go off create that user account, set it up for automatic logon, and choose the website that you've specified to go in there. So what you need to do in this case is actually just restart the machine. Now bear in mind that chaos mode only works when you're actually at the console of the machine. It won't work in an RDP session. So that's something you probably just have to be aware of. So you can't do it via RDP, but that shouldn't affect many people. Most kiosks are used actually as physical access machines, not as remote desktop access. So we just wait for that to restart. So once it's restarted, you will see here it is automatically logging on as the kiosk user. 
And bear in mind that we haven't removed any of the Universal Windows platform apps from this machine, so it might take a minute or so to log on. So we just let that finish. So once it's finished logging on, we should say that it opens up in a very minimal mode and just goes to the website that we specified when we set up the chaos mode. So you can see Edge launching now. And it takes me straight to a website that I'd set up there, which is the Telesca Security Radar Portal, which is actually one that you probably see in quite a lot of things like network operating centers and things like that. So there you go. If you want to set it up to do that, that's how you do it. The user can't break out of this because the only way they can break out of it is by pressing Control Delete. So if I send a Control Delete, you'll see it simply takes you back to the logon screen. So another user could log in like an administrator if some maintenance needed to be done, but otherwise all they can do is simply press return again and be returned back to that screen. So ideal, that will just sit there and display whatever you want it to on your screen and give that sort of display to people in wherever it is in reception area or something like that. So that's that use case covered. Now let's quickly just revert this machine back to where it was. So let's see, it's just restoring there now. And now we'll quickly run through how to set it up for an, a public access browser use case. So let's just log back into this machine. So we'll do exactly the same again. Simply click on start, start typing in assigned, and it'll give you the setup chaos wizard. Click on that this time, click get started. Again, give it the username, and obviously because we've restored the user that we created, it needs creating again. And select Microsoft Edge from the list there. Click on next, and this time change it to as a public browser. Now this time it asks you for a home page and a, a sort of an idle timeout. So let's just go to a bit of flagrant self-promotion. Let's make the home page my own home page there. And you get the option to restart Microsoft Edge after it's been idle. So it'll essentially clear out the user's browser session. You set that anywhere from five minutes to 24 hours. You can set it to never if you want, but in the interests of security, five or 10 minutes is probably best. So if it's left alone for five or 10 minutes, it'll actually reset the session, which is all really well and good. Click on next there. And that's it done. So simply click on close there. Close that down. And then just restart the machine again. And this time we should see it log in and take us into the public access browsing mode. And you can see it's logging straight in now. Again, probably take a couple of minutes because we haven't removed any of the UWP apps from this machine like we did yesterday. So once it's logged in there, we should hopefully see this time it starts up the browser at the home page we specified and locks it into a public access browsing mode. There's Edge starting up. It's gone to the right website, so it's got my website there, which is good. You can see it's got in private browsing mode, so it's kind of in a restricted browsing mode, which is great. So now the user can use this, he can browse my website, or he could uh, go on Google and search up something like YouTube or something like that, go and do whatever they wanted. But what would happen is when the user is finished, they simply click end session and it tells them 
Now, all of their data will be cleared, so if they've logged into something or they, you know, they've, they've looked at something that they, they wouldn't want people to know that they've gone to, like you know, their, their, their sort of predilection for kangaroo suits or something like that, click on yes and it's reset back to the basic session. So you've got a really, really easy to use public access browsing kiosk there. So that's all well and good and that's dead easy to set up. Now the only thing to bear in mind is that this is using the old version of Edge. It's actually called the Edge HTML version. It's sometimes referred to as the Edge Legacy version. Now as Microsoft move on, I think they're going to be the, the new version of Edge, Edge Chromium, is going to come along, and it may well get automatically delivered to some machines. Now these kiosks currently won't work with Edge Chromium. They need to work with the Edge Legacy version, Edge HTML. So if Edge Chromium was to get delivered to these machines, it would disable the version of Edge that we're using and would essentially break um, you know, the chaos that we've got set up. So something you need to do, if I'll just drag across here my domain controller, what you'll first need to do is make sure that you've got the Edge Chromium HTML, Edge Chromium HTML, Edge Chromium ADMX templates downloaded onto your machine, onto your domain controller, or wherever you manage your group policies from. And you need to set a particular group policy on those machines that will allow it to run the old version of Edge and the new version of Edge side by side. So if I just go into this group policy object here that I've already set up called Edge Settings and choose Edit, um, you can do this either as a computer or a user configuration item. Obviously, because these are kiosk machines, a computer configuration item would be the sensible one to choose. So we've got a computer configuration and expand policies, expand administrative templates, Microsoft Edge Update is the one that you want. Expand that and go into applications. And this policy here that says allow Microsoft Edge side-by-side -side browser experience, you need to set that to enabled. And that allows the Microsoft Edge old version, the HTML version, and the Chromium-based version, the new one, to run side-by-side. -side. So if for some reason you got the Chromium version of Edge delivered to your machines, then you wouldn't see your kiosk break in that situation. So just bear that in mind. And obviously before you can do that, what you need to do is you need to actually have the ADMX and ADML files on your machine and you can get those by going to this website that I've popped in there and that has appeared on my other screen <laughs> over there. Microsoft.com, ENUS, Edge, Business, Download. And what you would do is select your channel version, for instance, Stable 84, select the build, select the platform, and then you have a link there that says Get Policy Files. And you can then download those into your central store if you're using a central store or the policy definitions folder on whatever machine it is you edit the group policy from. So there you go. That is how to set up a Microsoft Edge kiosk for two different use cases in Windows 10. And if you watched my previous video, I'm sure you can certainly agree that it's much easier than it was before. Thank you.